We are live. What's going on, internet world, woodworkers, and everyone else who happens to stumble across this video? Uh, my name is Adam Hankel with the Makers Mob, and I'm here with Makers Mob member Kevin McCann. Did I pronounce that McCann or McCain? McCann. No, McCann. McCann. You got it You're right. Yep. Yes. Perfect. I love pronouncing. That's two weeks right. in a row that you've gotten the name. I know. Right. I'm killing it. Uh, yeah. Kevin, tell us where you're from, and uh, and yeah, where where are you from, Kevin? Let's start with Cranbrook, BC. Cranbrook, BC. So Kevin is uh, he's in British Columbia, which is the same province I live in in Canada, um, and I'm super excited to have Kevin on here with me. We're going to talk all about getting started with what you have, making making do, and making progress with. Um, with a with a small budget and just with with what you have, um, which is which is part of Kevin's story uh, in getting started in woodworking. So I'm excited to get into that. Before we do that, though, we are going to do our announcements for the Makers Mob for for members in the Makers Mob. Um, so if you guys are are not members, uh, this is just a peek inside the Makers Mob and what's going on. Uh, hey June, how's it going? June in Virginia, Michael. Hein, what is that? Oh, I can't always pronounce that one wrong. Uh, Hensgen, Hensgen, that's the one. Doug Ferrero, we see you in there in the chat. Um, make sure you guys let us know if you can't hear us as well. But uh, here's the quick announcements for the Makers Mob members. Uh, we've got announcements. Woo! Uh, the Kamiko Challenge. For those of you uh, who haven't heard, I'm sure you've heard by now if you've been on any of our lives recently, that we have Neil Paskin from Pask Makes going to be doing uh, the Kamiko Challenge. And registration for this closes on June 13th. And then the following week, we're going to start in on that together. Um, pretty much what Neil is putting together is a course on uh, making the Kamiko panels themselves. Uh, he's going to walk you through preparing uh, your material, through making the jigs, through the uh, actual patterns and making the Kamiko patterns themselves. And then once we're through that course part of, of the Kamiko challenge, we're going to do an actual project um, at the end that's going to incorporate the panels that we make. So kind of to, to put it all together. So that is coming up. Uh, like I said, that is going to be uh, registration closes June 13th at midnight. If you click on the link in the description uh, or in the post uh, where you're watching, you can see a, a discounted offer for your first month uh, to get in on that. So if you want to get in on that, I'll remind you later on in this live, but um, put that in the calendar for sure. Uh, next thing is project of the month contest for members. We're going to be giving away these two beauties. Um, I'm going to be doing the post tomorrow for you to submit your work for last month. And this is, um, you have to have your project submitted by next Monday, which I believe is the 31st at midnight. And then we're going to announce the winner uh, with, I'll get to that in a second. I'm actually doing a live with Jimmy Dresta next Thursday. We're going to announce the winner on that live. Um, Inside the Makers Mob, those are the recent projects. We got the Samurai Wall Mounted Bookshelf, the Modern Dresser, and John Heise's Woodworkers Workbench. Plans and tutorials available on the site. Live replays are always available in the live section on the site. Click the tab at the top of the homepage. Uh, we did this one last week. Chris from Third Coast Craftsman and I, we talked about his jewelry box build, um, which was awesome. This Thursday, so in two days, I'm going live with Liam Hoffman. Uh, who's the blacksmith in the Makers Mob, uh, and Jesse, the Samurai Carpenter. We're going to be just talking uh, blacksmithing in general. So if you have questions, bring those. Um, and we're also going to be talking about the bearded uh, hatchet build, which is a tutorial available on the site as well. Uh, so that's going to be fun. And then the following week, like I said, I'm going to go live with Jimmy Duresta, uh, and we're going to be announcing the winner of the project of the month in that, as well as just chatting with Jimmy about what he's got going on. So... That's going to be awesome. Uh, so that's what's coming up. Now we're going to get into chatting with this guy. So before we kind of start talking about, um, we're going to break down kind of uh, Kevin's experience through working through a project, but let's get a little bit more background on you, Kevin. Um, sorry, I do. I want to answer this question for you, Kath. Uh, the sign up is, is for 
a member, if you are a current member, you're going to be included in this. The sign up is just to get you on the notification list uh, for the challenge itself. So uh, if you're a member, you will be able to get in on that. You'll get notified when that's going to be happening. So that's to answer your question there, Kath. And thanks for joining us. I know it's always late where you are. Um, so Kevin, tell us a bit about your background. What is your kind of day to day uh, look like your day job? When did you kind of get intrigued with woodworking and what, where would you kind of consider yourself in like uh, skill level or, or yeah, your skill level? Well, my day to day is um, I'm one of the owners of a regional IT company, MSP here in, uh, in the Kootenays and that. So I, work with computers okay um so that's my day-to-day -day. um as far as for getting into uh into woodworking i've always liked woodworking been you know sort of a, a bit of a well, i grew up in the 80s so I've, I've always been a bit of a macgyver yeah. right so <laughs> um you know instead of buying something you just make it out of whatever you know is laying around and, and get the job and done kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, as a as a kid, um, I built a house with my dad. Um, so, you know, we did carpentry kind of work, but not really woodworking other than mm -hmm. in shop class and high school kind of stuff. Um, and then last year, um, I found myself with a bunch of uh, – of leftover wood and whatnot from doing some work in my in my yard replacing a fence and uh and had a a, a plane uh, that belonged to my wife's uh uh grandfather that i sort of cleaned up and whatnot so then i got playing around with that and then one thing led to another started watching youtube videos people like neil pask and uh and uh, Jesse and whatnot on on the internet and found that I really liked it. It just gave me um, gave me some time that I could just get out of my head, uh, mm. just concentrating on on what I was working working on with my with my hands. Um, bought a couple saws, um, just little hand saws, and been making do with uh, with the tools that I have since then. So. So how how long has that journey kind of been happening for you? Since July, August of last year. Okay, yeah. um, that's awesome. So I mean, so it's fairly fresh for you, yeah. uh, which is which is great. Um, and and this is not you. Sorry, I don't have it up here. This is not you, but this was this was uh, another member that I just took their picture, but a, a submission. Mm -hmm photo for the pro or the, uh, the joinery challenge that I know you did. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. which is kind of the, the end project is, is the project that we're going to focus on that Kevin built. But if you didn't know about the joinery challenge, it's something that we did in the makers mob. We've done it twice now. Uh, we plan on doing it again at some point. Uh, but essentially it's, it's your challenge to do a number of different, uh, joints using, uh, one time we did just hand cut only joinery. Another time, this last time, we included power tools, uh, but you could do it however you wanted. But essentially, you're doing these joints, and at the end, we incorporate a few of them into a final project, um, and, and that's what you're looking at here. So uh, Kevin took on that challenge, even though he wasn't completely set up with all the tools that you know some of these makers have. Obviously, you know Jesse's shop, the Samurai Carpenter, is just it's it's set up like uh, you know he's got everything that he needs as far as you know, doing, putting out some really nice woodworking and you don't have that. No, <laughs> you don't have all the fancy stuff. Right. So you kind of had to adjust uh, your approach with some things. So um, let's just talk about, um, you know, the project, like I said, what we're talking about is, is the side table that you see in this mm -hmm. and that's not Kevin's. We're, we'll show you off uh, Kevin's off in a little bit, but um, talk us through like, you're watching some of these videos with, you know, the tutorials for the joinery challenge. And, you know, he's, Jesse's explaining uh, or showing you how he did, you know, how he did certain things and made the parts and, and whatever. And you see, um, you see that, oh, I don't have that tool or whatever. Uh, I can't, I can't do it the same way. Tell, talk me through like kind of your mindset in like seeing that challenge and, and then, you know, you get creative and, and you figure it out. Um, can you speak to that? Well, anyway? yeah, like, 
like I said, um, you know, being a little bit of a of a make do kind of person, I've always found that I can think with regards to this is what the end goal needs to be. How can I get to there mm -hmm. based on what I've seen from other stuff? And Jesse's always been really good with regards to his videos. He's mentioned it often that this is the way I'm going to do it because these are the tools that I have. If you don't have these tools, find tools that will achieve the same thing for you, right? So, uh, you know, he talks about how he uses his uh, his um, plunge router with his, uh, with his jig for making mortises, but you can do that with a drill. You can do that with just a chisel, um, you know? So I have a drill, I have a chisel. So, okay, you know, I've already been told that I, that I can do it that way. So I just need to figure out how to. Mm -hmm. um, and and then come up with uh, with unique ways to do it. I used uh, um, a dowel jig um, for for some of my uh, uh, mortises, which allowed me to put a stop depth on the uh, on the drill bit, so that I wouldn't go any deeper than I wanted to for the mortise, and just hog out the majority of the material that way. Then cleaned it up with a chisel. Nice. Um, they so that, that's as, like a um, um, a Craig jig uh, bit. Are you talking about that, that style of thing? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, just a, just a little stop block on, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on a drill gotcha. bit yeah. and then, um, a guide that, um, that holds the, this at 90 degrees so that I yeah. can go into the, uh, into the wood and, um, know that I'm not going to punch out the, the cheek and I'm going straight into it yeah. and, and, uh, only going to a certain depth. Um, so, that, and then I would clean that up with the, with the chisel. Gotcha. Um, for for the hidden mortise um i mean they weren't as pretty as jesse's with the router but they're hidden so as long as they were smooth so i got good contact for the for the tenons and that for the for the glue joint they were going to work just fine right so yeah um when i got to the through tenons it was a little bit more i did those after the the other ones so that i had a little bit more practice with it um and uh and then went from there because um, I know I mentioned this to you, but for everybody who's watching that, this is the first time that I ever worked with hardwood. Um, so I've made nothing with hardwood prior to doing this table. So, um, you know, it was a little bit of a, a learning curve there working with that. Although in some of the, some of the aspects working with hardwood was a whole lot more forgiving than doing the, uh, the joint challenges and that, that we did yeah. earlier on, uh, in softwood. So, yeah. Yeah, um, because that tends to tear, whereas the hardwood um, doesn't. Although I didn't do myself any favors with the uh, with the curly maple that I did, because the grain runs every which way. Every way, yeah, yeah, every way, <laughs> yeah. Um, I couldn't have picked a, a rougher piece of, or type of uh, wood to play with um, for for my first one. So, but hey, yeah. I mean, it turned out beautiful. And we'll show that off in just a sec. Um, so, talk me through. We're looking at templates here, and then we're looking yep. at you cutting with a jigsaw. Uh, the yep. profiles. I mean. The samurai carpenter so I, used a plunge rotor with those jigs, and the samurai yep. carpenter used a bandsaw. But you found mm -hmm. that you did. So, it yeah, this way. so I created the created the templates um, just out of some quarter inch ply, um, and that was fun because I didn't have like a spindle sander for smoothing the curves. So there was a lot of time, especially on that leg one, mm -hmm. um, trying to get that even, and then on the the stretcher and the and the trestle, trying to get the the curves from both sides uh even yeah um that like was a, like that a mirror a mirror yeah mirror yeah. so i i actually did that i took um i had um on the trestle wasn't so bad there's less curves in that on it but on the stretcher uh that one i actually took i had one side that i liked and the other side that i didn't and it was actually a bit proud from the from the side that i liked yeah. so i just uh i traced um put it on a piece of uh, paper, traced it, and then folded that in half, and then cut out the trace, and then I had a mirror on both sides, and then I copied that back over to the other and did a little bit more working on it until I was happy with it, so. Nice, and yeah. so, um, you know, Jesse, he's got an edge, a big edge sander in his shop. Yep. What, did, what did you use, actually, to smooth that up? Uh, I used um, little blocks uh, with sanding paper. Okay. I have a... Uh, I have one of these Shinto rasps yeah. and then I have just a little uh, cheap four side rasp. So we got fine and heavy. So that allowed me to do um, curved and flats 
Um, so that's what I used for my shaping. Uh, so where all by rasp hand. and sandpaper, yeah, all by hand. Right. Nice. So, um, awesome. and uh, every once in a while, um, on some of the some of the curves, I'd break out the orbital with uh, some rough sandpaper, simply because it could you could get in there and sweep with it um, and um, get a little bit more um, that way uh, yeah. with rest and movement. And, uh, yeah, a little bit more aggressive, but also um, you know when you're sweeping with that, you can sort of um, make make your arcs actually arced right yeah. so um which i learned from trying to use orbitals for sanding stuff flat and making arcs in them yeah. so <laughs> if you've ever tried to, to to sand the edge of something with an orbital you'll find that you put little waves in it right so i i took that and and uh, and uh, and used that uh in my favorite kind of stuff so nice. then i just took those templates um put it on the rough stock uh that i had and traced it out with a pencil, cut that out, staying well away from the line with the jigsaw, and then use the uh, the two pieces of blue tape with CA glue trick to glue the templates down to the to the blanks, and then a flush cut um, bit on a trim router. So to, so uh, use, to trim so out the. You don't have the big plunge router, but you're still able to mm -hmm. do the same thing with the small trim trim router. Yep. Yeah, yep. which is which is awesome. I mean, it, it may take more passes and you kind of have to go slow with it because it doesn't have as much power, but you can still get it done. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, can you explain to me these photos here? I know that I can see the top is the glue up on the right. And then what are you yeah. doing on the left? Photo? Okay, so on the left, I that's my my little uh, uh, bench vice here. And I'm using dogs on the front and spacers to um, to give myself um, a pinch point uh, with regards to holding that uh, piece flat so that I can just smooth plane it on the top. Gotcha. So, yeah. So it's and then on preparing some of the pieces. Yeah, it's just yeah. one of the ways that I that I hold stuff um, on my little bench vise and that I now I have um, I have a little wedge dog system set up which makes it a little bit easier to lock stuff in place. Um, and then uh, that's right now, that one's sitting on a little bench hook that I have. I got three or four different bench hooks. Um, that one will fit that way across my little vise. I've got a short one that fits perpendicular across the vise. And I've got a long one that fits the whole length of my, uh, of my bench hmm. um, that I use in addition to the one that I have for doing my cuts and the one that I have that's a shooting board for uh, for using my plane to shoot things at 90 degrees. The right-hand side is the glue up of the top. So those are the, um, the three pieces from there. So those were all hand jointed uh, because unlike Jesse, I don't have a jointer. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they were all put um, vertical in, in the uh, device and, uh, and then, um, jointed, mm -hmm. um, just using um, a straight edge to make sure that they were straight across, and a um, and a square to make sure that they were perpendicular to the face, yes. um, which was important for this because I'm hand jointing. Um, you know, if I had a jointer, it wouldn't really matter if they were 90 degrees as long as they were all the same because then yeah. they they would fit together. But I didn't have that, and then um, a few clamps and that to uh, to suck that together. And then later on, I had to cut a circle out of that. So and that was fun with just a jigsaw. So, yeah. yeah. Um, these are these are parts you're referring to before, uh, yep. after after you've used laminate uh, trimmer yep. or the the trim rotor to to cut them, and you've prepped them, and now you're laying out these these mortises in the legs on the right hand picture there. Yep. Um, you had mentioned. That you you know your kind of technique that you use to drill this out, and this is yeah. I mean Jesse shows you um, I think in in the joinery challenge you actually showed a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one was with the um, plunge router, which he does when he's doing like a, a project that has a lot of mortises. If it's mm -hmm. just a few mortises, then he'll he'll do it this this way as well, where he'll drill out the mortise and then use the chisels to clean it up. So just I mean, as a beginner. Yeah, so those those four um, uh, legs on or the picture that's on the left hand side. That's yeah. that's the progression. So the first pit, the the bottom uh, leg is what it looks like after the first go. The second one is after I tap out all the crap that was in there. The mm -hmm. third one is after I clean it up a little bit, and then the last one is the finished product with regards to that. And this is 
what I used to drill those out. So it's just um, a dowel jig. Okay, right? gotcha. Yeah. So, um, and it has different uh, pieces that I can um, put in there, which for, for bushings for, for being able to drill perpendicular and I can yeah. set where the fence is. Um, so I could set that on the, on the, uh, the leg, use a, uh, a clamp to clamp that onto the leg. And, and then I it. could just, yeah, I could drill down. And then mm -hmm. the nice thing about using this over freehanding it was that I could go halfway and mm -hmm. drill another hole because this was guiding it. The bit wouldn't slip off. So yeah. I could actually drill through the edge of the other piece. So I think I ended up going, um, I, I go circles all the way across and then come back and drill down through the middle of it is the way yeah. that I found to be the most efficient for using yeah. it. That's actually um, great. So, so I did that for, for that. And then I also used this when I drilled the recessed holes in the um, in the trestle, so that I could put screws in to mount it to the um, to the tabletop later on. And that was really fun because, of course, it had already been already shaped out, and I was having to balance yeah. this on something that I had already rounded because I didn't drill the holes ahead of time. So, yeah. and I guess if you, I mean, another way to do it would which would be similar is, I mean, you could literally make your own. Uh, version of that, even if it yep. was out of plywood, two, um, two pieces of wood, 90 yeah. degrees, clamp and it on there, drill a hole through it, and then just follow that on. Yeah. Um, that's a, I, I love that. That's a great yeah. tip. That's a great tip. Um, so as a beginner, uh, this experience obviously helped, um, helped you kind of grow in your skill clearly. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about this. I know I've, I've heard you in the past about, you know, using these hand saws and them drifting. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about your progression with, with using these saws and then also some insight on the saws themselves. Sure. So, um, so that's cutting the cheeks on, I think that's, uh, might be a leg top. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It probably is because of the length of the, of it in there. So, um, what I've learned from watching, uh, videos is to, um, first off, put in, put in the good, um, knife wall and that all the way around, uh, with the marking, um, a knife and whatnot. And then starting at one corner, cut in, making sure that you're watching the top line and the, and the vertical line. So that you're staying mm -hmm. on the horizontal plane and the ver vertical plane and cut in a little bit at, at the top, um, on the one corner, then either turn the piece around or move to the other side. I'm fortunate I can sort of move to the other side with my setup here um, mm -hmm. and then cut the other corner and then keep progressing sort of until you're getting flat. And then you can cut down until you get to the bottom of, of where your, your um, cut on the cheek needs to be. And then on the same on the other side, and then you've got two curves on the side, making sort of a little triangle um, on the, on the, the cheek of the, of the wood on the inside. Yeah. And then all you have to do is just cut vertically down until you've cut that whole triangle out. Yeah. And, um, Cause your saw, will, cheek off. your saw will yeah. follow the, the, yep. what you've cut out. Right. And then you end up with a nice little piece of wood like this, which <laughs> that's is the, the keepsake. You know, <laughs> yeah. That's the, the, the cutoff. That's the, I don't have a lot of hardwood, so you never can tell when I might need this little scrap pile. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so after you've, uh, you know, you've kind of prepped them, then I'm just curious. I mean, this is this is getting uh, away from using what you have, but how did you finish this project yourself? Um, I first thing I did. Um, so. My son had bought some, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's in that post if you, teak, if you have it. There. Teak oil. Yeah, teak oil, I, I remember. the other. It's the other one that, I, that we had there. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, there, was a, there was another, uh, sort of like the Osmo. And I, actually, I think it was Osmo, right? So I'd taken a piece of, of scrap like this, two, two of them. I put some teak oil on one. I put some Osmo on another. And then just for lack of anything other than curiosity, I put teak oil and then Osmo on top of it. And that's the one that I really liked. Hmm. Um, so I, so I did a, um, a base coat of teak oil and then I put the Osmo on top of that and then just uh, furniture paste wax um, on the, on the thing after all of that. So um, I did the, uh, I did the teak oil and the, and the Osmo um, and then um, did the glue up. Yeah. And then after I had um, put 
the uh, the wedges in and shaped and sanded them all down and got everything taken apart. Then I finished it with the paste wax afterwards. So yeah, so that's the finished project there. Uh, absolutely stunning. The the figure in that that uh, curly maple is is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, this being your very first woodworking project that you did in hardwood, uh, hardwood turned out amazing. So thank you. I mean, good job on that. Like it's 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 a beautiful piece. Um, definitely, definitely a standout piece, especially with the with that figure in that wood. Uh, if you were to um, if you were to just to kind of wrap things up, like. Mm -hmm. Talking more about like making do with what you have. Like, are there any more thoughts that you have? I know we talked a bit before about like material and, you know, able, someone here, Steve, commented about loving woodworking, but the material is so expensive now. Mm -hmm. um, you, you've kind of managed to, to get yourself some material, from what I understand, mm -hmm. um, by stockpiling or, or, or whatever. Can we talk a bit about yeah. that? Just like give people ideas, maybe? Yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of the inspiration for, for that kind of stuff also comes from, you know, watching some YouTube videos from um, other content makers and that where they talk about, you know, how to get um, wood. Um, you know, just pallet wood as an example, you can get um, you can get some really nice hardwood out of, yeah. out of some pallets depending yeah. upon, um, on, you know, where you're getting them from and, and what they're being used for. So, you know, you're not going to get tabletop material. You're not going to get slabs for that kind of stuff. Um, but then also, you know, I, I just cut down um, a maple tree and I'd taken some limbs off of it a couple of years ago. Um, and I'm making the handle for a saw out of maple from, my tree and some of the some of the people might have seen the uh the handle that i did on um the chisel which was also this is just from a branch from that same tree yeah. right so um and then like i said you know i i kept this because that's that's spine material right there yeah. right so i can yeah. use that as as a as splines on on some mitered corners for something down the road instead of cutting another piece like this for out of something for a spline. So, um, you know, who knows when I might be able to use it. So, and then, um, you know, I picked up a bunch of um, old, old, old two by fours. Um, I have some old fur that I've done some of the stuff that's up here on, on my wall out of. Um, I made, my my own mallet last year that's out of reclaimed fur which i mean it's getting a little bit dented and whatnot from from use but it's so old and dense that it's uh that it's held up pretty good yeah. um and that's just reclaimed lumber um so you can you know it's not going to last like something out of hard maple wood um but you can still make do with uh with other stuff and the Working with the softwood, because it's because it tends to uh, compress and tear instead of cut like the hardwoods, it forces you to actually be a little bit better with your work, with especially mm -hmm. with like chisels and planes. Yeah. Um, then the hardwoods a lot more forgiving with the rest of that. So you know when we made all of the the joints and that from the joinery challenge and that um, using just reclaimed two by fours. Or I think Jesse um, and yourself just use brand new two by fours. Yeah, like crazy if you think about it now. That's a lot of money you guys spent yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, but I've got him sitting right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh. forty five hundred dollars worth of, of wood there. Yeah, um, and walnut uh, wedges. In yeah, the nice cheap stuff, two by right? Fours. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, making those joints out of out of that softwood um really forces you to to well first off make sure that your chisels are sharp and then so you have to learn how to sharpen them uh, because of that and and how to keep them sharp and and whatnot and then how to use them properly not taking huge bikes you know yeah. make sure that uh you know if you've got 
a mortise that's uh, a half inch wide, well, you're probably going to want to use a quarter inch chisel to take out most of it, three eighths at the most. And then when, when that's all said and done, then you're going to use a half inch chisel to clean up the ends and maybe yeah. a bigger chisel to, to, to clean up the long ends, but you're not hogging out the material with that unless it's a mortising chisel that you're actually mortising uh, the whole thing uh, with. So, um, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but it, it sort of teaches you a whole bunch of uh, techniques for how to do it. Yeah. And I think it's a mindset thing. I mean, uh, to go back to the whole pallet thing that you mentioned, mm -hmm. a lot of people, including, I mean, I've heard Jesse make fun of pallet stuff all the time, you know, because that's, I mean, <laughs> when you can afford and you have the, the nice material, I mean, it's easy to do. But at the same time, I've actually come across uh, pallets that were actually made out of solid oak. Yeah, uh, like white oak, you know, that are, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, um, if you go to a lumber yard, uh, any of the, the pallets that are made for like, um, masonry stuff, like, like rocks or interlocking mm -hmm. bricks or anything like that, those things are made of just, they're solid. And usually yep. you're getting like a four by four, uh, yep section like that's that's the support rails yep. for those pallets and you can you can actually i mean if you work around the the nail holes and stuff you can manage to get some decent mm -hmm. material to do projects with um Absolutely. If you're doing small projects so yep. um yeah that's that's a that's a great tip um I think, and you know, uh, like I said, even even chunks of wood, right? You know, if people are, um, you know, if you see an ad for somebody saying that, you know, they have some firewood in their yard, like yeah. Nathan's area, and that they're cutting up walnut and maple yeah. and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and and just come haul it away, and and it's cut into pieces already, and you know, little little chunks of, oh, there we go, little yeah. chunks of wood like that, but that came out of a chunk of wood like that right totally. so i mean this was this was uh about uh two feet long uh the the piece of of log from that and i just split it up with uh with an axe uh, a couple of years ago and just stacked the wedges uh to dry and then i just used a straightening jig to to square it off and slowly worked it milled it until it was uh square and then um and then just used the the plane to to make it S4S, so. Yeah, and yeah. that's, that's I mean, a great point you brought up. I mean, Nathan, if, if you guys didn't watch uh, the lives that we did with Nathan fought a little while ago, talking about the building of the samurai workbench that he did, uh, one, of the, one of the videos we did was actually, like part one to that series was talking all about uh, his journey in, in acquiring the lumber for that workbench where he, he got these trees that had fallen down that someone was just getting rid of. They were walnut. And I think Ash was the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, and he worked out a deal with a guy at the sawmill that if he brought those there, they worked on them together, that they would split the material 50-50. Uh, and then Nathan took that and gave gave the guy at the sawmill the rest of the material that he could use to sell. And that was kind of the fee that he paid. So he didn't end mm -hmm. up, he did labor, but he didn't end up yep. paying anything out of pocket. And then uh, he just built that up over, over, I think a year or two before we, he was able to, to do that big project. But I mean, uh -huh. you can be creative in that way as well. So, yeah. um, and now he's got, I don't know, thousands of board feet worth of lumber stacked up from just yeah. doing that. Yeah. Right. Just and that's the same thing. Lumber. That's yeah. the same thing. Uh, Jesse did when he was kind of starting out, like, uh, that a lot of people might not know. Um, when Jesse was first starting out like his YouTube channel, he was doing the exact same thing yep. um, and getting stuff milled up. And there's like, there's sheds. So that the property that I, I used to live on, uh, we, I built a house with, uh, it was like a big family commune kind of thing. And Jesse had some sheds there. And in those sheds, uh, they, he had them like stacked up like lumber. And I'm sure there's still stuff in there because he's just always kind of done that. And it's, it's just thinking down the road, like eventually I'm going to yep. need this stuff. So it's drying out here. It's, it's ready to go. Um, so if you start that process, then you might need to kind of scrounge around and figure out what to use in the meantime while you're doing stuff. But I mean, in a couple of years, if you do that, you could be stocked up to, and ready to go to put out some really nice stuff. So, yeah. Um, and, and you don't have to have a big mill, right? Like, I yeah. mean, these, these pieces of wood that, that I cleaned up, I started with a hatchet on a wood 
block that I have in my yard for a fire pit mm -hmm. and cleaned up the edges so that they were fairly good. And then um, just started on the on the table saw and a straightening jig going from there. Mm -hmm. I know Jesse has some old videos of a uh, chainsaw mill that he had. Yep. Chainsaw mills, if you have a chainsaw, chainsaw mills are, are you know, a couple hundred bucks. So you could do, you know, all sorts of stuff with a chainsaw mill. Granted, yeah. you're going to lose a lot of material doing it that way. But if the material is not costing you anything, then you're, you're, ending up in a, in a positive, and then you can move up from there to, to bands on mills, like what Nathan was doing. And yeah. Yeah. So, so the there's last lots thing, of ways to get it. Totally. The last thing I wanted to mention was just, um, or to touch on, I guess is, is in the same way tools, right? Like hmm. you, you don't, you don't have to have the full shop set up. I think some people get frustrated sometimes mm -hmm. when they see these makers with, you know, you know, Jimmy Dressed has got this beautiful shop with like a hundred thousand different tools and Jesse's got this beautiful shop set up and people either get jealous or frustrated because they can't do it the same way. But I mean, Jesse started off with nothing as well. Like he didn't, he was working uh, in a, in a pop-up tent in his driveway to do the first video that he ever did on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, he was working in his driveway. So, um, and he just used what he had. And, and I mean, that's kind of, what I'm seeing in your story. Like you're just making do with what you have. Obviously, yeah. obviously you have some tools. Yep. Right. Yeah. But so, I mean, I have, I have a set of chisels that I got as a, uh, as a Christmas present. Yeah. The Narex. Just set of, just set of uh, rock Narex chisels. Yeah. Um, you can see the Huskies up above were the chisels that I had prior to that. A yeah. couple of old chisels. Um, you know, I got a couple of squares. I got a spoke shave. Um, I got an old hammer that I put, um, uh, handle once again from the maple, uh, tree that I did. This is the, uh, marking gauge that I used for that project. Um, it's pieces of reclaimed oak from, uh, an old, um, DVD stand that I have. <laughs> um, and, um, it's just got a wedged, um, just got a straight, straight beam. And then it's got a pin with a wedge on it. And as mm -hmm. you can see, the cutter is a washer that I sharpened up and just screwed onto the end. There right? you go. Um, We're going you know, full circle exactly. to MacGyver right? right here. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm fortunate enough that since then, I have bought myself a nice dual furnace gauge and that that just got this i've only had it for less than a month now. So that was like Christmas Day. But nice. um but I didn't have that for the project, so I had to make do um, with uh, with this one. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of uh, Suzanne saws, um, both pull saws and that. Um, one's a Ryobi and the other is, uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's the one with the back on it uh, for, for cutting tenons and, uh, and for doing um, uh, dovetails. And... Um, yeah. And I, you know, I mean, I, I used to cook for a living, so I know how to sharpen knives. Um, so transferring that over to sharpening um, chisels and, and whatnot. And you can see I have a strop on the wall yeah. uh, for, for keeping the edge on, on things, uh, you know, was pretty easy for me. Um, I have a hand plane, just a little number four. Um, it's not even a Bailey. It's just a, a um, uh, handyman, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. but uh, but I got that for like twenty five dollars, yeah. and uh, and cleaned it up, refinished the handles, um, and uh, and that works great. And then you know, made myself a little vice, made myself a uh, um, a shooting board, made myself some uh, bench hooks. Um, just you know, whenever I noticed that I, that I needed a um, something to be able to do a job. I just made that. Yeah. And in addition to now having something that I could use to make the next thing a little bit better, I had the skill for making that, yeah. which helped me to make the next thing a little bit better. So, so the moral yeah. of the story for everyone watching is don't, don't let the, the lack of tools and material hold you back. Yeah. There is a way you can figure it out. It may be a little bit more difficult and more, uh, brain work to get it done, but you can do it. So don't let that hold you back. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to just pull up this is one. just the time. That's that's really yeah. all that it is. Is yeah. that if you don't have all of the really neat tools like Jesse does, it's going to take you longer to do the same thing. Yeah. He did his table in a day. Yeah. I did my table in a long weekend, and the last day to get it done, um, <laughs> so that it would be done for the for the end of the joinery challenge. Yeah. Um, I worked until till. Um, midnight. Um, so we had, it had to be submitted by, by midnight Pacific time and I'm in mountain time. So yeah. I worked till 1235 my time. I had 25 minutes left when I finished that project. I had just enough time to post it. So, Crazy. Um, you know, it's, a, yeah, it, it just takes a little bit more time. So. Yeah. Um, I want to pull up this one comment similar. This is June, uh, similar to recovering pods. I check furniture that is discarded. Um, yep. Every once in a while, I run into something decent wood, fits in my car, goes home with me, and gets dismantled uh, as project yeah. wood. I've actually I'm doing that right now. My wife wants me to make her a um, like a, a side kind of a sideboard table, uh, like a long narrow table, and mm -hmm. uh, I have this old bed that's made out of decent wood. That's you know we were gonna get rid of, but instead of getting rid of it, I'm just gonna use this. I'm just gonna yeah. use the wood. I was like you know what, that's actually, I can use those, I can use those, so I'm just going to tear it apart, uh, exactly like what June's saying. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to we're gonna wrap this up now. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. I hope well, everybody, yeah, I hope everybody listening was, was inspired in some way to, um, to not let these things that could be looked at as obstacles hold you back from, from getting going um, and, and woodworking. Again, beautiful job on the project that you did in the Joinery Challenge, your first hardwood project. Um, for those of you who, uh, actually for everybody, because we are opening up this, um, or that's next Thursday. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't have the right one up. But this Thursday, um, I am going live with the, here, I'll go back through my slideshow just to show you. Yeah, this Thursday. Uh, I'm going live with the Samurai Carpenter and Liam Hoffman, and we're going to be live on the Makers Mob YouTube channel, and it's going to be open to public. We're going to do a couple of these lives that are open to public, uh, as well as it'll be available on the Samurai Carpenter YouTube channel and Liam Hoffman's YouTube channel. Um, so it's going to be live on all those this Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so you guys are all welcome to join us there. Uh, at the same time, if you guys want to uh, get in on, now i got to go all the way through the slides, the Kamiko Challenge, uh, make sure you click that link and get in on that one uh, first month discount, 75% uh, off your first month. You can get in on that Kamiko Challenge, and uh, all members of the Makers Mob can get in on that with, their, with just their monthly fee. So um, that's it. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you and your being active in the community. Um, so I think that's, we're going to sign off. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much guys for tuning in. We will see you guys, uh, hopefully see you guys on Thursday uh, with the live with the Samurai and Liam Hoffman. We'll talk to Thanks, you guys, guys later. Bye. And broadcast.